Welcome to The Power to Change Today. And what I want you to know about me and about you is we're a family. We're a big global family, wherever you're watching from, around the world, around the country, wherever you are, is God's our Father. He unites us. I'm not just a preacher or a pastor or a teacher. I'm a part of the family like you are. And we need to stay together. And we need to fight for one another. And we need to encourage one another and strengthen one another. So if I can be used in your life to coach you, to mentor you, to teach you, to inspire you, to empower you, then I'm gonna do it every way I possibly can. And today it's gonna to be more of a one-on-one -on -one Bible study that I wanna take you into. But one of the things that's happened in my life over the last couple of years is that I've stripped away the complicated things. I've really felt like God was showing me how to simplify and really not be led astray from the simplicity of my devotion to Jesus and my family and you guys because we're family and you're not alone. But there's one thing that I wanted to talk to you about, the power of one thing, the power that comes from focusing on one thing at a time. Because so often we think of all these different areas of our life. I've got to fix my finances, my family, my health. My, and all these things can distract us and discourage us. But when you understand the power of one thing that I want to talk to you about today, it's going to set you free. So get ready, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit afterwards and pray for you as well. So check this out. Everything in the Bible is all about Jesus. But I want to focus on a Bible study with you today called The Power of One Thing. The Power of One Thing. One thing I know, John 9, verse 25 in the New King James Bible. Remember, this is when the man that was born blind was healed by Jesus. And the Pharisees, they were you know, kind of upset that he was healed and they tried to shame him because he had no education and they tried to shame him because they didn't want to admit that a miracle had happened in this man's life. The devil always tries to shame us to try to, to, try to uh, get us to stop believing, to shame us into being condemned, to shame us into feeling um, guilty. He wants the devil is a shamer. And Jesus is the opposite of that. He takes the shame upon himself so you can be not guilty and feel the peace of God. But so this blind man gets healed, and they said, they said, tell us about this man. Who was it that healed you? And he's a sinner. He can't, be, he can't have healed you. So this seeing man who was once blind said, whether he's a sinner or not, I do not know. But one thing I know, one thing I know, once I was blind and now I see. I want you to think about that. One thing I know, this is what I was, this is what I am. This is who I was, this is who I am. One thing I know, this is what I was, this is what I am. This is who I was, this is who I am. If we can get a hold of that, that it's not complicated. It's not, we don't have to know everything. We simply need to know what we were and know what we are. We were lost and now we're found. We were condemned and now we're not guilty. We were cursed and now we're blessed. I once was a hater, now I'm a lover. I once was afraid. Now I have faith. I once was a doubter. Now I'm a believer. I once was worried. Now I'm at peace. This one thing I know. When it comes to knowledge, you know, you can have a million books on your shelf. When it comes to knowledge, you could have the information and data about everything in the world. But nothing is really going to change your life more than knowing what you were, and knowing what God's done in your life now. I once was blind, now I see. I don't know about all that. Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know about all that. That's not my, that's not my, that's, that's, that's not my focus in life. That's not my expertise, judging people. My expertise is what I was and now what I am. My expertise is 
the experience of knowing what I once was and knowing what I now am. It's the power of one thing. One thing I know. Don't seek knowledge to just have information to impress anybody. The one thing you need to know, the one thing that needs to be, that you need to know more than anything else is who you were compared to who you now are. Mark 10, 20, but Jesus had found this man that said, what must I do to, to have eternal life? This man comes up, this young man comes up to Jesus. Well, what must I do to, to have eternal life? He said, follow the commands, you know, love your neighbor, love God, you know. And the man says, I've done all those things. I've, he, he, I think Jesus also said, you know, obey your parents. The kid says, I've done all those things since I was young. What am I lacking? All these things I've kept since I was young, Mark 10, verse 20. And then in verse 21, the New King James Bible, then Jesus looking at him, loved him. Jesus looking at him, loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go and go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. Now we know, for those who've read this passage, you know, the Bible says when, the, when Jesus said this to this man, he he turned away and walked away grieved. He walked away in grief because he was more attached to the things he had than the things that God wanted to give him and the things that God wanted to do in his life. One thing you lack, he told him. You see, it wasn't that this man, in order to be saved, he's got to give to the poor. He's not talking about having a place in heaven. He's talking about having treasure in heaven. He's not talking about making it into heaven. He's talking about this will create treasure in heaven. So we only get to heaven by the grace of God. By grace are we saved through faith, that not of ourselves, it's the gift of God, not a result of works as anyone should boast, right? He says in um, Ephesians 2.8, but Jesus is talking about what kind of reward is waiting for you in heaven if you can fall out of love with your possessions. You know, Jesus was giving this man an opportunity to love something else. This man was in love with his possessions. You know, there are a lot of people that are in love with their possessions. They don't, they don't say, it's not an emotion. They don't necessarily say, oh, I love, I love my money. I love my this, my that. Um, but it's to be attached the word love means to be so attached to something that you don't want to let it go. You don't want to let go of it. You're attached to it. You need it too much. And Jesus was giving him something else to attach himself to. One thing he lacked was he lacked love. Because Jesus looked at him and the Bible says he loved him and then said to him, one thing you lack. I love you. There's one thing you lack. It's that you love your things more than you've allowed the reality of my love to sink into your life. Jesus loved him. Jesus loves you. And he's giving you an opportunity to fall out of love with your possessions and fall in love with him. You see, this young man could not love God back. He couldn't love Jesus back until Jesus loved him first. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. So in verse 21, Jesus, looking at him, loved him. What a beautiful word. He loved him. It's a, it's a present participle. He's, he loved him. He was, it's a past and it's a present. He loved him in the, as in previously, and he loved him at that moment. And he's loving him in that moment. And he's giving him an opportunity to reflex love back by attaching himself to something new. This young man had an opportunity to attach, attach himself to Jesus. That's love. But he was too attached to his possessions. And that's why Jesus said, I'm, the one thing you lack, in case, just because you're the one that asked, if you want to truly be free from loving your possessions, 
I'm giving you something better to love, me. And you'll lose your, your worldly affection for things. There's nothing wrong with having things. It's just being willing to let them go is where God wants us to be in our lives. Being willing to give, that's, how God, that's who God is. God so loved the world that he gave. Generosity is the mark of being touched by God. Generosity is the mark of being touched by God. Generosity is the evidence of being touched by God's love. Generosity is the proof that God's love has hit you right in the heart. One thing you lack. It wasn't, like he said, I did all these things, Lord. We got to stop trying to impress God with all the things we've done and simply focus on the one thing that we didn't do, not sinful things. I'm not talking about that. The one thing that matters to God is surrender. Surrender. God can do anything in your life when, when you're surrendered. That means you're trusting God with what you have. That means there's nothing in your life that you're not willing to let go of because your love for Jesus is so much more powerful than your love for things. And our love for people should be more powerful than our love for things. That's why we should give. That's why we should tithe. That's why we should honor God. That's why we should be generous, because we love people more than things. We, more, we love people more than our possessions, and then when we give, we're making a way. We're giving people a chance to be saved. We're giving people a chance to, to be delivered, to be healed, to be introduced to the real Jesus to be introduced to their true worth, to be introduced to mindsets, changing the mindsets that will change their world. One thing I know, one thing I ask, one thing we lack, one thing that is necessary, this is the fourth thing, one thing that is necessary, the fourth one thing, right? <laughs> Luke 10, 41 and 42 New American Standard Bible. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by so many things. That word distracted is troubled, bothered, carried around, dragged around by life's circumstances. Literally, that word distracted, dragged around by life's circumstances. Like you're just being dragged around life's trouble is dragging you around. Life's trouble is controlling you. And he's saying how to break it. One thing is necessary. So he says, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by so many things, but only one thing is necessary. Verse 42 says, only one thing that is necessary for Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So this fourth thing is the one thing that is necessary. One thing that is necessary in our lives. It really goes with the second thing, one thing I will ask. It's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mary chose to listen to Jesus, to sit and listen and let the love of God drip from the lips of her Savior, Jesus. One thing is necessary. We think so many things are necessary. We think everything in life puts an equal demand on our lives, and really there's only one thing that's necessary. Other things might be important, and if something's important, we need to give attention to the things that are important, like people in our lives. But one thing that is absolutely necessary if you're going to live in this world without worry and without anxiety and without questioning God, why don't you care? Why isn't my sister helping me? Why do I have to do why, why, why? The victim mindset, if you, the one thing that is necessary to be, to be delivered from that victim mentality, the one thing that is necessary to be delivered from that, the control of worry and the control of anxiety and the control of, of, of people bothering you, it bothered, it bothered Martha that Mary wasn't doing what Martha thought she should be doing. Isn't it funny how we know what other people should be doing more than we know how, how we, we know more 
about what other people should be doing than we know about what we should be doing in our lives. And one thing is necessary that Jesus said to sit at his feet. Mary has chosen the good part. Mary has chosen the good thing. And that thing that she chose to listen to God, to listen to the words of Jesus, it's not going to be taken from her. You know, whatever you listen to God about will never be taken from you. Listen to what God has to say about you, how much he loves you. It will never be taken away from you. If you will listen, lean in to listen. Remember, John leaned into the bosom of Jesus, leaning up against the bosom of Jesus, and there Jesus told John what Peter didn't even know and what the other disciples didn't know. Jesus whispers and really says to, to John, the one who dips his bread in this sop with me, that's the one that's going to betray me. It was leaning in to Jesus that caused John to hear something that nobody else heard. It was the leaning in to Jesus that caused John to survive something that nobody else could survive. It was John leaning in to Jesus that caused John to be fearless at the foot of the cross, fearless on the island of Patmos where the book of Revelation was given to him. <laughs> so we have one thing that I know. This is what I was. This is what I am. This is who I was. This is who I am. You need to know who you are more than you know anything else. One thing I ask from the Lord that I shall seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty, to see the beauty of Jesus and meditate in his temple. I'll contemplate his beauty. I'll study at his feet. And he says, I'll live with him in his house. There's others that live in his house too. So get used to being connected because it's powerful power. It doesn't mean get, get, all the, get all the junk out of your life so that you so that you can then be qualified to be a part of a church. Everybody in a church has junk in their life. Everybody in a church, everybody on the earth has skeletons in their closet. Just let go of that fear or worry about being exposed because let me tell you what we should do for each other as the body of Christ. We cover one another. We don't expose one another. We cover our brothers and our sisters we expose the devil, we cover each other. That's how to walk together. Well, there's one thing I know, one thing I ask, one thing I lack, surrender. One thing you might lack, surrender. It's not about what you do for God, but it's about surrendering your thought life, surrendering your opinion of the matter and accepting God's opinion of the matter, which is always better than our opinion. And one thing that is necessary, and finally, one thing that I do. This is a very powerful truth from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brothers and sisters, New American Standard is what I'm reading out of on this one. I do not regard myself as having taken hold of it yet, but one thing I do. He's talking about like the ultimate achievement and fulfillment of God's perfect will for his life. I do not regard myself as having taken hold of it yet, but one thing I do, one thing, one thing, one thing, get that, one thing. Be a specialist in one thing. One thing I do, he says, then he says three things, really. So it's kind of funny, it's kind of ironic, but it's just God tongue-in-cheek as well. It's kind of a sense of humor as well as uh, one thing can always be divided into easy steps. One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead and pressing on toward the upward call of God that is in Christ Jesus. Think about that. The one thing I do, Paul said. So when it comes to doing, everybody wants to know, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Here's one thing to be focused on doing. One thing I do, forget what lies behind. Stop being limited by your past. Stop being defined by your past. Stop even, you know, leaning on your past for the good things that you've done and, 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 and resting easy on I, I've done enough. Like It's not about what you've done in the past. It's about what you do with what you know right now, forgetting what lies behind, forgetting 
Forget it. Let it go. Let go of regrets. Let go of your pain. Let go of your mistakes. Let go of what people have done to you. Forgetting what lies behind. Let go of what you've done. Let go of your mistakes. Let go of what's limited you. Reaching forward, he says, to what lies ahead. So forgetting, reaching to what lies ahead. There's so much good ahead of you and ahead for you. And pressing on towards the goal of the the prize, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, you're going to get to heaven by the grace of God, but let's press on when we feel stuck. Let's press on when it's hard. Let's press on when all of the lies that are we're he hearing in our head are trying to keep us paralyzed to our past, paralyzed to our inferiority, paralyzed to our insecurities, paralyzed to our mistakes, paralyzed by those things. And held and chained to those things. He said, man, press on to the upward call. God's call to you is always going up. It's always going up. He's always taking you up higher. And it's a prize. Salvation is a gift. But that, that call of God is a choice to forget what lies behind, to reach to what lies ahead, and to press on no matter what comes against you. This one thing I do. It's one thing I know. It's one thing I ask. It's one thing I lack, one thing that's necessary, one thing I do. If we can focus, maybe focus on one of those things each day next week, Monday through Friday. <laughs> maybe try each one of those and focus on that. But... It's just a little play on words to give you a more focused look at how simple the victorious Christian life really is. Wow, this one thing I do. I want you to hear that again and again. This one thing I do, this one thing I know, this one thing I ask, this one thing I lack. Only one thing is necessary. You know, today, once and for all, let's rid ourselves of what's been limiting us, what's been distracting us, and let's grab a hold of what lies ahead. And remember, your future is bright. And listen, if you're joining me today, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, pray right now with me. Let me pray with you right where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is where you're going once you pray this prayer. You're going to go up, up, and up when you accept Jesus as your Savior. So pray this with me out loud, right where you're watching, Heavenly Father, or right where you're listening, just say, Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior, as my Lord. I believe, just say that out loud, I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead, amen. It's that simple, salvation is that simple. Jesus did the hard part. All we gotta do is receive this free gift of salvation. Now you're adopted, in, adopted into his family just like I am. You're part of the family of God just like I am. And if you prayed along with me, welcome home. And check out the email on the screen and I'll send you a book, my free book, The Power of a New Life to take you through the next steps of this walk with God. So get it right now. You can download it or you can ask for it. Go to the address on the screen. And before I finish today, I want you to know something and I want you to be a part of something really special. I'm on a mission to see over 30 million souls saved and lives transformed in the next five years, but it can't happen except what's gonna happen in the next five minutes. If what happens in the next five minutes is what God wants to happen, then we'll be able to get to the next five years and change people's lives. But it takes partnership to reach the world. It takes open doors to reach the world. It takes a commitment to get the gospel out, to reach this world. And I need your help and I want to get Bibles, I want to get the solar-powered audio Bibles into the hands of people that can't read. It's all audio, it's all powered by the sun, no battery needed, no electricity needed, just the electricity of the beautiful sun God created. And we can get the gospel to more people in more places with your help. I believe in God that he will show you if there's a part for you to play in that. If you can give a gift of $250 or more, I've got some really special things that I wanna send you. And I really wanna pray for each of you, but pick up the phone, call the number on your screen, make the best gift you can. Let's take this gospel as far as we can take it, as long as we can take it until we go home 
to be with Jesus. So thank you so much for your commitment. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for the power of simplicity to permeate each of our hearts, that all we need to do is listen to the Word of God, sit at your feet, and then take this beautiful gospel to the world. I pray for each person, Lord, to find their purpose and discover their part in being the beautiful feet that bring the good news to this new generation. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much. My announcer is going to tell you more, and I can't wait to see you on the next broadcast. God bless. Right now, we are working to send several thousand solar-powered audio Bibles to the people of Brazil, India, across Asia, and throughout the Middle East in their native language. But we can't do it without your help. With your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Pastor Dickow's brand new teaching series, Revival of Simplicity, which further discusses the topic of today's teaching. Ask for offer 1121. With your gift of $50 or more, we will also include today's brand new teaching in its entirety, The Power of One Thing. Ask for offer 1122. With an extraordinary gift of $250 or more, we want to send you your very own solar-powered audio Bible as a reminder of your support of helping us reach 30 million people over the next five years. Plus, if you call today for offer 1123, Gregory Dickow will include a copy of one of his best-selling devotional books, How to Fulfill God's Purpose. And if you call right now, we will include everything you see here, plus a digital jump drive card of all these teachings and more. Please don't wait. Gregory Dickow needs to hear from you today. Live operators are standing by to take your call, or you can go online right now to gregorydickow.tv.